What's up, friends? It's your boy, Eric Bledsoe, and I am back. You may have noticed the last couple of weeks the show didn't come out, and that's because I had COVID. And so it seems like a lot of people are dealing with that right now in some way. And so in this episode, I'm going to talk about three lessons that my family and I have learned during our time with this illness that might be helpful to you. And at the end, a bonus for how you can be helpful to somebody else, things that really meant a lot to us. And so um, that's all coming up on this episode of the Take the Hill Show. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it's time to take the hill. Let's go. Friends, it is so good to be back. I want to give you a gift right from the top. If you head over to takethehill.tv, I have put together something called the 30-Day Spiritual Transformation Challenge. If you and I were to sit down and have lunch and you said, Eric, just help. Where do I start in my journey of faith? This is my best stuff on what I would tell you to do starting on Monday morning, right? Our goal is to become like Christ, and you can't do that by just coming back next week, sitting in a pew or in a chair on Sunday morning. We have to learn to implement the things that we discover in the text, in community, uh, on a Sunday morning. We have to begin to integrate those things into my life and so into our lives. And so that's exactly what this 30-day spiritual transformation challenge is. It's a step-by-step action by action, helping you to discover how you can actually experience the kingdom of God on Monday morning so that you can fulfill your calling, take the hill, and ultimately change the world, right? That's what we're after. So head over to takethehill.tv. That is my gift to you. Uh, I am so glad that you're here. So uh, COVID, it seems like the whole world uh, has been talking about nothing else for two years. And recently it was my turn. And so my family and I have passed it around. I uh, uh, tested positive like two weeks ago, 14, 15, 15 days ago. I want to make sure I got that right. Um, and it took me about a week uh, for all that funkiness to break. And then my son got it and then my daughter got it. And, and we've all three kind of come full circle, but my wife is in the midst of it right now. And so in this lesson, I wanted in this podcast, I wanted to talk about the three things that we have learned that make a significant difference in the way that we feel. I'm not talking about medicine. I'm not going to get into any of that now, but things that we did because not only is our body suffering, but um, because of the isolation and the funkiness and all that goes with it, um, three things that we learned about how to take care of our hearts during this time, things that really made a difference. I want to help you and probably somebody you know and love is going through the same thing. And so I want to help you help them as well. And so let's dive in. The first thing I want to say is that we forgot how real the loneliness is from isolation from quarantine. And I just want to say it's real. Uh, if you're dealing with COVID and you're feeling that funk, don't trust yourself. You you will begin to think irrationally and, and begin to think, you know, kind of woe is me and uh, depression, anxiety, feeling of helplessness or loneliness. Guys, those things are legit and they're not to be taken lightly. The second thing that we learned is that limiting time on social media versus watching a movie or a show that you prefer, limiting time specifically on social media actually helped us to lower our anxiety and lower the stress that we were feeling. There's something about scrolling. I don't, again, I'm a social media guy, obviously, but I'm just telling you, there's something about scrolling and not interacting with people that makes you feel more isolated and more alone because you don't feel like you can actually engage, right? So it's like watching a party from the outside, uh, from outside the windows and not actually being in it. It actually made it worse. And so while there may be some interaction with friends, you can only interact so much. And so we just found that if we limited our time on social media in default uh, for maybe watching an actual movie together as a family or engaging something uh, with each other, Man, it really helped our anxiety level to go down, our frustrations, the loneliness we were feeling. And the third thing that I want you to know is that the thing that actually made a difference for us, even more than that, is when uh, we reached out to friends and let them know that we had COVID, they began to check on us. And so, you know, nobody knows if you don't, if you don't tell them. Um, but if you've developed friendships and you have that community, that that brotherhood that we talk about here at Take the Hill, 
you're not doing life alone, reach out to those people and let them know, hey, I, we are not well, uh, pray for us. And they're going to say, hey, is there anything you need? And that's a really great time for you to say, yeah, actually, I could use some help with my groceries or yes, I need this. More than that, though, them texting just to check in every few days. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's the update? That has meant the world to us. And uh, because you stayed around uh, to the end of this video, I want to give you a bonus. The thing that that really set it apart was our actual neighbors. Some of our friends live 30, 45 minutes away or, or further. But the people who actually live next door to us, uh, Miss Jimmy brought over crossword puzzles and book games and I think soup. Uh, another neighbor brought a, a pot of chili, right, Miss Jill? Mr. Bill, just just a few moments ago, dropped off a frozen pizza, right, uh, to our home and um, like a porch drop and then stood back in the yard and he's turning 90 this week. Uh, happy birthday, Mr. Bill. Um, and he said, hey, I just haven't noticed you out. You guys are a very active family. And so I knew something must be wrong. And I checked with one of the other neighbors and they said you were ill. So I wanted to just love on you. Guys, that is the freaking recipe. That is how you love people. That is how you take care of them. You you call, you text, you reach out and ask if they're okay. But then when they tell you everything's okay, you still buy the pizza, right? You still bring over a game or a gift, porch drop, sanitize, gloves, whatever, the whole deal. I don't care. Do something even if they say they're fine, that mess has uh, been a balm on our hearts and made us feel seen and loved. Um, I can't tell you what that would do for somebody else. So maybe you haven't had COVID. Maybe in the Lord's kindness, you have been able to go this whole time without it. Thanks be to God for that. But know that people very close to you are actually going through it right now. And it may be a lesser version or or whatever the next you know like outbreak will be. I, all those things considered, would you do something for them? Would you reach out and call? Would you text? And would you buy the pizza? Would you buy the crossword puzzle or, you know, Settlers of Catan and drop it on their front door? Whatever your thing is, like, love on them. If they say they don't need anything, they do. They need your friendship. They need to know they're not alone because that mess is really causing them to go crazy, feel isolated and frustrated. And so, friends, you can be the answer to their prayer, their their unknown prayer, right? That they may not even have the words to pray, but they need to know that that somebody loves them and is uh, thinking about them, especially at this time. And just uh, one more thing while I'm thinking about it. We have older friends in our community and loved ones who, COVID or otherwise, are always shut in, who have illnesses or physical disabilities or just life circumstances that don't allow them to get out. That would be a really great thing for you to do at this time, right? They, they are feeling even more isolated and alone than, than all of us. Um, I'm going to be back at it next week, Lord willing. But for some people, this is a continual thing. Would you pray for them? Would you show up with a call or a text? And would you buy the pizza, uh, the board game, and just let them know you love them and you miss them and you hope that they get well soon? Friends, that's it for this week. Just a quick check-in to let you know we're doing well and we're so grateful to be on the mend. Continue to pray for my wife as she gets the last of this behind her. But we love you. We're grateful. Let's take the hill together. I'll see you soon.